Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, I'm bringing you guys my top five absolute worst premium battleships list. These are five premium battleships that I would highly recommend you avoid spending your either money or in-game resources on, because in my opinion, these ships are simply not worth it at all. Before we get into the list, however, on the Sunday videos, most of the time I normally upload a different game or something just to add a little bit of diversity to the channel in terms of the video games being covered here. However, for the past couple of Sundays, I've been trying to diversify the content on the channel a little bit more by talking about different firearms. And in this case, for this Sunday's video, we took a look at the series of FN battle rifles, taking a look all the way back at where the uh, battle rifle started with FN, with the FN-49, going all the way up to the most recent one, which is the SCAR-17. If you're interested in that type of content, historical firearms are talking about things like that, design, the way that they function, their accuracy, go ahead and check Check out that video. I'll put a link either here or in the description and a pinned comment down below. Again, if you're interested in that, please check that out. I'm just trying to see what does well so we can have some more diversified content going forward with the channel. I appreciate you guys checking that out. And let's go ahead and get on into the list now. So, again, I would not recommend you guys pick up these ships at all, even though some of them are pretty, I wouldn't say popular in game, but you might have heard of quite a few of these beforehand. But, anyway, let's go ahead and get started with number five, which is the tier two Japanese battleship, the Mikasa. The Mikasa is a great meme, don't get me wrong. This ship is dumb, but it's not dumb in the case of, like, the incomparable, where it's dumb in a good way, where it's just stupid and goofy and things like that, like with the incomparable, again, a 20-inch gun armed battle cruiser that has a 10-kilometer concealment but no armor, but it's incredibly fast and has torpedoes and things like that. The Mikasa's just dumb-dumb. Now... I'm not trying to downplay the historical significance of this ship at all. She is preserved in Japan as a museum ship, which is awesome. I'd very much love to get over there one day and see her. But in-game, she's kind of terrible. So first off, she's a battleship at Tier 2. Now, that has actually been improved upon a little bit in recent years. Before, if you had the Mikasa and you went into a battle down at Tier 2, you were probably going to be sitting in the queue time for five minutes. Why? She's the only tier two battleship. So, the matchmaker's trying to fit you against another tier two battleship, which is only the Mikasa. So unless there's someone else playing the Mikasa, you're going to sit in queue probably for five minutes. Then, because it has to match you with a battleship, or try its darndest to match you with a battleship, you're probably going to get up tier to tier three playing against tier 3 battleships, which have much more, um, shall, shall we say, useful main arm, arm, um, main battery guns, unlike the Mikasa's four 305mm guns, which typically led to a bad time. Now, the, the ship is derpy, don't get me wrong. Like, she has a lot of secondaries, and sure, if you get in close, they can chew through low-tier cruisers and destroyers fa fairly well, but, I mean... Down at low tier, it's torpedo boats that normally roll, uh, or cruises with torpedoes, and yeah. Now, in today's World of Warships, the way that low tier matchmaking goes, you will be matched against bots, so the queue times normally aren't as long, and you are probably going to be playing against bots in a tier 2 battleship, so at that point, yeah, that aspect about the ship has improved. But what hasn't improved is the main battery gun's accuracy. They're terribly inaccurate, you only get 4 guns, you still have a 30 second reload, and the truth of the matter is, everything at this tier is paper thin, unless it's another... Um, Mikasa. So even when you do wind up hitting the enemy cruisers and destroyers, you're just going to overpin them with your AP. Even with a full secondary build with the 21 point commander, which I do have on the gameplay in the background, your secondaries only get out to, I believe it's 3.8 kilometers, which isn't that far, even by tier 2 standards. So sure, you've got this insane amount of secondary guns, but they only go out to 3.8 kilometers. 
and even then the accuracy isn't all that great the main battery, uh, battery guns aren't all that great you're slow you're maneuverable this is a tier where torpedo rushing is still very much a thing and you don't have any torpedoes to counteract that you do get a heal and you do have a fair amount of hp you know, 31,000 hp and of course you are a battleship so you do have pretty decent armor especially compared to all the other tier 2 ships but i mean yeah it's a meme it's a neat historical ship but i wouldn't recommend spending money on it now it is a tier 2 ship so it is fairly cheap but i mean still <laughs> in most cases you're gonna buy the ship play it for two or three games maybe break it out every now and then but other than that not really going to get too much out of it the economy down at tier two isn't that great either so you can best spend this money elsewhere in some premium time or saving up to go toward another premium ship and i believe right now the mikasa isn't, isn't even available in the armory she does come back every now and then for certain in-game events and in the armory every now and then and again if you pick it up for free it's a fun derpy ship sure but i wouldn't spend money on it all right going down to number four we have the tier seven american battleship the california now again this is another real still historical ship and i'm not trying to downplay the historical significance of the california i think the history of the ship itself is incredibly cool i think the design of these post pearl harbor um modern modernized battleships is incredibly awesome they look great they look i mean look at this thing it, it's massive it's very wide you've got that mountain of um five inch secondaries on either side of it then you can get the 12 14 inch guns that's all cool i like that idea and i wanted to see one of these in game but they didn't really do the california well here so my biggest issue with the California is that there's a ship a tier lower than it with the exact same main battery guns and it's at tier 6, a much more comfortable place for this type of battleship and that is the Arizona. The Arizona has 12 14 inch guns down at tier 6, she only has to deal with tier 8 games. The California can and will get up tiered to tier 9 games. If you look at how big this ship is, she's a big target and there's a lot. At tier 9 and tier 8 they can overmatch the california's bound stern because she doesn't have 32 millimeters of armor because of course she is a tier 7 battleship so on top of that too she's slow 20 knots this is still a standard u.s battleship and unlike the american split line the battleship line she doesn't get an improved heel at least it's not improved near enough to make up for the fact that everything can and will pin her and the fact that she simply cannot run away from anything She's terribly slow. And her 14 inch guns, yeah, they're cool and all, but 14 inch guns at tier 7, mm, they can still hang in there if you've got a quick reload time, like with something with King George V, or if they're really accurate. And she does have more accurate guns at tier 7, although, again, you can still get screwed over by RNG, and now you're stuck in this slow battleship that you really have to be paying a very close attention to the map in order to not get yourself in a bad situation because she, she can't disengage from it now with the california or the tennessee class uh pearl Harbor post pearl harbor mo modernization i wanted to see something like what they finally decided to do with the vermont where it's kind of like a floating island of doom it's slow but it's tanky it's hard to kill it has an improved heal they finally did that with the vermont but with the california this is more of a sit in the back long range sniper even if you are sitting in the back again you only go 20 knots so if something goes wrong you're kind of screwed so yeah i'd absolutely pass on the california arizona is a much better pickup it does the same thing a tier lower and that's just better all in all going down to number three we have the tier seven french battleship strasbourg so yeah, the Strasbourg, another ship that's a real still historical ship, and again, I'm not trying to downplay the real still ship or hate on the real still ship. They just did it dirty in game. So the Strasbourg, and I talked about the ship uh, I think a couple of weeks ago. She is a Dunkirk, which is a tier six battleship with very minimal changes made to her. Her main armor belt is a little bit thicker than the Dunkirk. She has a one second faster reload time, and her Sigma is improved by 0.1. And she has the reload booster. So, on paper, this ship isn't the worst thing ever at tier 6. But at tier 7, when again, you have the Dunkirk's armor scheme, which if you've never played the Dunkirk before, by tier 6 standards, the Dunkirk is a very squishy battleship. 
that's traded off by her great speed and, manu um, and maneuverability. She's a very fast battleship at tier 6. She can get on a flank pretty good, find the side of the enemy ships, and with her very punchy French main battery, she can bring the pain pretty well. Now, her main battery guns aren't all that accurate because, again, French AP, they hit well hard above their weight class. They hit like 14 or 15 inch guns rather than the, I believe they're uh, 11, 12 inch guns that they actually are. And that's thanks to the nice velocity of the guns. Now, the Strasbourg, you have 0.1 better Sigma, which normally in most cases with battleships, it is a noticeable improvement. And while that's true with the Strasbourg, I mean, you're taking the Dunkirk shotguns and putting like a mild choke on them, basically. And again, it's still pretty punchy, so if something does show you its broadside, like a tier 7, 8, or 9 battleship, because you can't see those, you are going to hit them pretty hard. And you do have the reload booster, so you can pop the reload booster and get some quick follow-up shots. But simply put, I don't think they did enough to the Strasbourg to warrant it being at tier 7. Yes, the slightly thicker main battery belt does help in some cases yes the really the, the one second faster reload is nice and yes the 0.1 sigma buff is nice and yes the reload booster is nice but it's just not enough if they had gone like full jean bart with this and given her the engine boost on top of that to where you basically have a very fast battle cruiser at tier 7 that would have been nice and then they turned around and made a whole line of these things with the french battle cruisers so now you have Techland alternatives at tier 8 at least, you know, this is tier, tier 7. You have the Toulon you can get at tier 7, which is pretty nice too. That does basically what this ship does, but better. So that in my case is the nail in the coffin for the Strasbourg. Don't waste your money on it. You have a whole line of these things that are much better uh, placed tier wise and balancing wise rather than this one at tier 7. Alright, moving on down to number 2, we have the Collinwood, which is the... Nelson replacement that fell absolutely flat on its face. So, for those of you that don't know, the Nelson, which was a real still historical ship, was a tier 7 free XP battleship. Now, the Nelson's thing is that she had 9 16 inch guns down at tier 7, which is amazing. That's a lot of overmatching that you have there. She didn't have the best armor, though. However, she did have a super heal to make up for it. And her AP and HE were both very fearsome. So, basically, glass cannon that could reprint its HP a couple of times before you went down. The main question when playing a Nelson is, what do you want in addition to your Dreadnought? Would you like some Witherer on top of that as well? You load the number one key up for that. The Cullenwood, not so much. The Collinwood gave up one gun per turret, so now you have this weird six-gun battleship, which, as far as I've been able to tell, wasn't a real uh, proposal for the, the Nelson class. And you trade that super heal that you could 3D print back basically two-thirds of your HP for a... It's a still improved heal, but it's nowhere near the old super heal levels. And a reload booster. Reload booster seems to be the new thing they like slapping on every battleship now. So, in theory, you can get some pretty good burst out of this ship. Because, again, she still has 16 inch guns. And this is still at tier 7. Where you can and will slap pretty much anything that slips up and shows you broadside with your 16 inch guns. And you still have the overmatching capabilities of the Nelson's 16 inch guns. But, all in all, it just kind of falls flat on its face. The Collingwood still seems to suffer from dual gun syndrome, where when we have battleships that have two guns per turret, the dispersion seems to be absolutely terrible. What really happens there is that you only have two guns per turret. So in a lot of cases where you can only use two of your three turrets, with most other standard setup battleships, you still have six guns. Because again, most battleships have three turrets. I'm sorry, uh, three guns per turret. But when you get stuck with these ships that only have two guns per turret, and you have to angle, and you only can use your front turrets, you're using four shells instead of six. So you have less shells being slung at the target, so it very much hurts a lot more when shells miss and bracket the target, which the Collingwood still does. Now granted, you have the reload booster, so you can pop that and try to offset that. But, I don't know, it's just a far cry from the Nelson, 
and there's much better tier 7 premium battleships you can spend your time and resources on. Uh, the Duke of York would be one that I would immediately point fellas to if you're trying to find a good tier 7 British premium battleship. That's a great one. I like it quite a lot. So, Collinwood, again, hard pass for me. And coming on down to number one, we have the tier 6 premium, no, tier 7 premium Commonwealth battleship, the Yukon. The Yukon, the Yukon, the Yukon. This is, well, was a very famous ship a uh, little over a year ago during the Great CC Walkout. Um, this is the ship that Little White Mouse was asked to design, but then she wasn't asked to design, but then she did design it anyway because of Wargaming's famous miscommunication errors, and they took all our work out and made this thing instead. If you want to know the full history behind the Yukon, I have several videos going over the Yukon debacle, uh, which you can very easily find just by searching up Sea Lord, Mountbatten, and Yukon. I think there's like three or four videos from that mess. And this is what we got. So what is the Yukon? The Yukon is a Monarch-class battleship down-tiered from Tier 8 to Tier 7, which gives it a thinner hull, which can get overmatched by, of course, you know, a lot of the ships that she can and will see. And she has nowhere near the great DPM or RPM of the Monarch, and she has a zombie hill. So the idea behind the Yukon is that this is supposed to be a stealthy battleship that can sneak up on its targets, punch them in the face, and then run away. Or, since she does have the zombie hill, she can take a lot of damage, she can pop the zombie hill, and she can then brute force her way through the damage that she's getting or recover from getting in a brawl with another battleship, which is great on paper. Like, I don't mind the the idea behind that type of playstyle. In fact, that's how I used to play the Conqueror back when you could fit the 18-inch guns on the Conqueror. I'd slap those eight 18-inch guns on the Conqueror, go drive by a couple battleships at point-blank range, pump the broadsides full of 18-inch AP, zombie heal my way out of that situation. But the problem is with the Yukon, well, CVs exist, now submarines exist, and yeah, you're pretty much always spotted. Now you have subpar range and subpar uh, DPM and again, thin armor for what you are. And yeah, sure, in like a tier 7 game when it's just tier 7 ships, there's no CVs, there's no submarines. Sure, by itself in that situation, this ship can work. But in every other situation, which is about 90% of the matches you're going to get into, this ship is absolutely terabad. And this is a tier 7 premium, so this one still costs quite a bit of money. And granted, there's not a lot of Commonwealth battleships out right now. So, yeah, I guess if you do want a Commonwealth battleship, this is all you're going to get for the time being. I'm sure we'll get more in the future. And I'm pretty sure they'll be a lot better than this thing right here. Which it is unfortunate. This is the first Commonwealth uh, battleship that we did get in such a sorry state. Again, and in Tier 7 games, like if it's Tier 7 brawls or Tier 7 ranked and there's no CVs, no submarines, sure, it'll work. It's just that's not the reality of most of the games from Tier 7 on up. And again, this is a ship that can and will see Tier 9 games. This ship can see the Musashi which will absolutely bully this thing for its its uh, damage pool and say thank you and then finally delete you once you run out of your zombie hills. So guys, again, avoid the Yukon. Don't spend your money on it or any in-game resources on it. I think it's still up for doubloons at this moment, I do believe. So guys, that's my top five absolute worst premium battleships. Avoid these ships like the plague. Again, I'm not hating on the real-life counterpart of these ships. These ships are just rather subpar in-game and aren't worth the time, resources, or money that you need to get these ships. Let me, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. What are your top five worst premium battleships? Let me know what you guys think about that in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like leave a comment and subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy the video make sure to let me know in the comments down below that helps with the algorithm and i thank you for that hope you guys have a wonderful monday have a wonderful rest of your week hope to catch you guys in the next one